Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 20, and the title of this lecture is The Seven Spirits Before the Throne, in brackets, Apocalypse. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for inviting me again. It's been a real pleasure, a real honor to be here. The title of our lecture today, number 20, will be The Seven Spirits Before the Throne. You can find this information within the book of Apocalypse, called the Book of Revelations, the last book of the Bible. So, why the seven spirits before the throne? Why seven? Why not more than seven or less than seven? or a different number, because number seven is a cosmic law. Do you remember we mentioned that before? It is the law of organization of the universe. You know, we have seven musical notes. Let's try to remember that. The seven musical notes, you know, correspond to seven different types of vibration. And if we try to understand the universe, the universe has been created through mathematics and also through music. So the different vibrations of music, of the musical notes, correspond to seven different parallel universes, different dimensions of time and space. They are also connected with our seven endocrine glands within our own organism. The same, the same seven chakras, remember that, of yoga. What about the seven churches of the apocalypse? This is very, very important. Because the seven churches of the apocalypse of Asia, according to the Bible, people ignore that Asia means our human organism. So the seven churches of the apocalypse are within ourselves. Remember that we are a magnificent laboratory of nature scientifically speaking, and at the same time, we are a temple of the divinity. What about if we try to describe that instead of one temple, we are seven temples? The seven churches of the Apocalypse correspond to the seven endocrine glands. They are connected. They are not the same, but they are connected and also connected to the seven chakras. So now, the seven spirits before the throne it's important to try to comprehend who is the throne? What's the meaning of the throne? The throne is connected with the cosmic Christ in, within the universe. You see, but there is a higher throne, which is the absolute. Remember, we mentioned the absolute before. The absolute is the homeland of the spirit. We could say the homeland of God. The universal spirit of life descended from the Absolute, and also the feminine aspect of the spirit called Mater. In Latin, Mater means Mother. So the wife of the Holy Spirit is Mother, Mater, the Mother of the Universe, the Divine Mother, the Cosmic Common Mother, you know, because the being of all beings has no sex, is higher than masculine and feminine. But to create the universe, positive and negative kind of energies, you know, they had to descend. So the being of all beings descended from the absolute, the spiritual universe, and created the universe between a masculine and feminine aspect. So here, this is the law of creation, the law of three. So the father, the mother, created the universe, and now the purpose of life is to create the perfect child or the perfect son, daughter of this creation, which is the cosmic Christ. So the throne represents the cosmic Christ. So our physical son and all physical sons of the universe represent the physical body of the cosmic Christ. Let's try to understand that. All nature is alive. Every atomic particle is alive. 
every atomic particle pulsates and carries the seeds of the cosmic Christ or the cosmic consciousness. Let's try to understand that. So now, you know, it's important to try to comprehend that the seven spirits before the throne in our solar system, they do represent the seven basic planets of our solar system connected with the seven days of the week. You see, now, so we can say that to understand this better, you know, trying to understand our modern science, like astronomy, astronomy and astronomy now divided into cosmology, the study of hyperspace, or they call it also astrophysics or the space exploration. But we forgot that astronomy descended from astrology. Astrology. You know, do, do you remember that the astrologers were persecuted by the Inquisition? You know, not only the astrologers, also the alchemist and the Kabbalist were persecuted by the Inquisition. Many of them were, you know, tortured to death. Many of them were burned alive. One of them was John of Arc. And John of Arc is an angel that descended from a higher stage of reality. She reincarnated on earth. And after she were burned alive, we mentioned that before, that was the test she had to pass to become resurrected. She is a woman that became resurrected. She incarnated the cosmic Christ. What about Nostradamus? He was also an alchemist, persecuted by the Inquisition. He was arrested and released. You know, a man that developed superior senses. It means that he ascended into a higher stage of consciousness, getting closer to the throne of the cosmic Christ. What about the Kabbalist? The Kabbalist, you know, you, we study Kabbalah normally. People study Kabbalah through the Jewish religion. Is connected with numerology and also mathematics. But in reality, the ancient Kabbalah came from Egypt. And now, if you remember the angel Metraton, we mentioned that before, the angel Metraton gave to our ancient humanities the knowledge of alchemy, Kabbalah, and also astrology. Somebody could say, well, what is alchemy and Kabbalah in the Bible? What is astrology in the Bible? Well, the three are in the Bible. Alchemy is the first three within, the, within paradise. The first three in the book of Genesis, remember. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is alchemy. It teaches how to transform lead into gold or learn into spiritualize matter. Matter is matter, but can we spiritualize matter? Of course. Of course, this is the purpose of life. And the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, teaches about that. And the entire Bible is written in an alchemist language. The trouble is, our experts in Biblic, Biblic studies don't seem to know that. Or if they know it, they don't want to share the knowledge. What about Kabbalah? Kabbalah is the second tree of the book of Genesis, the tree of life. Remember that. The two trees share their roots underground, which is the Bible. The voice of God, the voice of the divinity teaching us. What's Kabbalah? It is connected with the spirit. Alchemy is connected with matter, learning to spiritualize matter. And Kabbalah is learning to crystallize the spirit. So then we can unify matter and spirit into one. Because God, the word God is coming from Latin Deus, that means dos, two, number two, is a spirit and matter. This is God. What about astrology? Is it in the Bible? Yes, it is. When we speak about the seven spirits before the throne, we are talking about the seven planets closer to planet Earth, connected with the seven days of the week. Every planet is more than just a mass of rocks, lakes, rivers, oceans, mountains. This is what our astronomers study, trying to find if there is a connection with our planet Earth. 
So we could find life in all those planets, similar to the Earth, but they ignore, respectfully, dear astronomers of the world, respectfully. You don't seem to understand that every planet is alive, is a gigantic living organism. The entire galaxy is alive. Our planet Earth is alive. But we seem to ignore that, or if we don't ignore it, we don't want to, you know, spend time meditating about it, trying to know better how can we learn the true reality of the cosmos. So within every planet there is a spirit, a superior living force, and that spirit is what we are mentioning right now, the same spirits before the throne, superior beings. The Bible calls them the Elohim. We can call them archangels because they are higher than angels. They are all superior beings who reach a stage of perfection, which is a spiritual. They learn to spiritualize matter and they also learn to crystallize their spirit. So they learn to unify themselves. They became closer to God. In ancient religions, they called them the gods, the ancient gods. Well, Christianity and Judaism doesn't like that. So we say there is only one God, and we would agree with that because in reality, the being of all beings that lives everywhere, and we are all part of it, the being of all beings is the absolute, the cosmic common father, cosmic common mother, higher than all spiritual beings, higher or lower than we are. So then we can see now that astrology is in the Bible, either we like it or not. Alchemy, Kabbalah, and astrology are part of the Bible. The problem is we don't know how to read the Bible. We don't know how to comprehend the Bible. And of course, our mission is to contribute to do that. What about Isaac Newton? Newton was the first father of physics. Well, he was also an alchemist. He was a Kabbalist, and he was also an astrologer. Let's try to understand now that the mineral kingdom is alive. When we study planets in the universe and we see only rocks, you know, deserts, you know, we don't realize that the mineral kingdom is also alive. Now, the trouble is moons, moons are all dead planets. They are dead planets physically speaking. The moons used to be planets with life inside, with rivers, with lakes, oceans, mountains with snow, you see, and then after a cycle, a long cycle, they died. And the main reason was that their humanities were not capable to understand the real purpose of their own lives. And instead of contributing to the life of the planet, they destroyed their own planet, their own collective home, and of course they destroyed themselves. Physically speaking, our moon, for example, our moon used to be a planet with life inside. And all human lives similar to ours lived there. And after when the moon died, we, spiritually talking, we were reallocated in different planets. So probably we lived in the moon billions of years ago when the moon was a planet. But remember that in one of our lectures, we did mention that the creation, you know, of planet Earth, and remember that the parallel universes. So our planet Earth, you know, is more than one planet. Planet is physical, but it's also etheric, and it's also mental or atomic, and it's also molecular, you see, or astral. Same thing happened with the moon. So in the moon, in the moon there, are, there is life, but not physical life. Angelical beings live in the moon. We're going to be explaining that slowly, slowly. So coming back into the seven spirit before the throne, connected with the seven days of the week, let's describe the names, the names of the seven spirits before the throne. Number one, we did mention that the moon is a dead planet, but it is connected very close to the earth. It's our satellite. When the moon died, the liquid fire of the interior 
of the moon came out and created a new planet. Here we are, planet Earth. So the spirit of the moon used to be Gabriel, the Archangel Gabriel, remember? The one who announced the coming of the Christ. The Christ who already was a Christ, who descended from the stage of perfection to ascend again. His name was Joshua ben Pandira, and Joshua ben Pandira, or Jesus, incarnated the Christ again. This is one, this is why he is considered a very high, superior, perfect individual. He reached perfection within perfection. He incarnated the Christ again, but his level is so perfect that he also incarnated the cosmic common father that lives in the absolute. Behind our physical sun, there is a spiritual sun. And that spiritual sun in Christianity and, and Catholicism is called the star of Bethlehem. Remember that. Bethlehem represents the spiritual sun behind our physical sun. Now, coming back into the moon, so the moon ruled by Gabriel. The earth is ruled by Melchizedek. You will find the name Melchizedek many, many times in the Bible. Melchizedek, Melchizedek is the ruler of planet Earth. But now let's talk about Gabriel. Gabriel is the first spirit, spirit number one before the throne, closer to us within our solar system. Gabriel, the spirit of the moon, where only angelical beings have reality, there is no physical life like ours, well, he is ruling a very specific task within our solar system. He is connected with the ray of creation. What is that? There are seven rays connected with the seven spirits before the throne. So the ray of creation is connected, of course, with procreation. You know, all animal species who procreate, all Vegetal species who procreate are connected with the moon. Did you know that? When you plant a seed in the country, in a farm, that seed will procreate life. Well, the angels of the Archangel Gabriel are the ones who do the work. They are invisible to the human eye, but they are helping us without being noticed. Because with our five senses, we cannot perceive reality the way it is. We need to develop superior senses. And we spoke already about the seven superior senses added to the five that make 12 senses. So angelical beings, they have already 12 senses because they were capable of ascending, ascending into higher stage of consciousness, a higher stage of illumination, which is the purpose of life. This is why we are here, transforming our lead into the gold of the spirit. So, the same angels of Gabriel are connected with procreation. When we procreate the baby, our doctors say, oh, the strongest sperm is the one who will produce the creation of the baby. We say with all respect to our doctors and scientists in the field, we tell them with all respect, we're sorry, but we do disagree. Because it's not the strongest sperm who produce the fecundation of the oval, the feminine oval, it is actually an angel of Gabriel who makes the miracle of life, bringing the baby into the world, or maybe more than a baby, according to other cosmic laws, like the law of cause and effect, called karma dharma. So sometimes, you know, children are being born defective, it's not the strongest sperm then. If that's the baby, it is the baby that has to be born through this specific father, this specific mother, this specific neighborhood, a specific country, a specific planet within the solar system. Do you realize that? There is a big difference within what people believe, what our scientific world believes. But believing is not enough. We have to learn to know instead of believing. Because to believe or not to believe is very weak. It doesn't give us a proper answer. It's an incomplete answer. 
So this is the first spirit before the throne, the Archangel Gabriel, connected with the moon and the earth. Number two, the second spirit before the throne is the Archangel Raphael. Have you heard the name before? Yes, of course. People who are into religion, religious, you know, studies, they recognize this name, the Archangel Raphael. He's ruling the planet Mercury. Mercury, again, is a living, gigantic organism, ruled by a superior being, higher than we are, higher than angels, because they are archangels. Raphael is ruling the second ray descending from the Absolute. We can call it the ray of medicine, the ray of medicine. So every problem that we have here, every medical problem connected with health is interrelated with the Archangel Raphael. And the angels that are ruled by Raphael are the angels of medicine. Sometimes, you know, there are mysterious cases of people who had a strong, a very, very lethal illness. People were condemned to die. And these people made incredible sacrifices. They made a pact with Raphael. And they made a deal with Raphael, the Archangel Raphael. They promised to quit drinking. They promised, you know, to quit all kind of evil activities from the past. They changed drastically. They contributed to spiritualize their own matter. You know, they try to heal themselves by making a deal with the divinity because Raphael is closer to the divinity than we are. And mysteriously, in an incredible way, people have been healed. I know personally a few cases of people who were told you will live another year and these people 10 years later, they were still alive. What is that? An accident or something mysterious that we don't understand? Well, in a more advanced lecture, we will give you more information about who are angels of medicine connected with planet Earth and also connected with Raphael, the Archangel Raphael. How can we contribute to heal people by invoking those angels? We also recommend, you know, if you believe in that, if you accept that possibility, to light the candle. A candle, we recommend the color yellow. Yellow color is connected with medicine. If you paint your room, your bedroom, some of, you know, of the walls could be painted with yellow, it will relax you. It will give you stronger health. And it's also connected with the mind. It will tranquilize your mind, it will make your mind more relaxed. We can sleep better in a room painted yellow color. We for, I forgot, I apologize, I forgot to mention the Archangel Gabriel, we mentioned before, connected with the moon, connected with the ray of creation, procreation. Some couples who are willing to have a baby and they cannot, to invoke the Archangel Gabriel and to light a candle of white color. This is the color of the moon, white. So this is our recommendation. So coming back into Raphael, the candle, if you accept that possibility, should be yellow. You know, it doesn't really matter too much, but it could be better. Also, to wear a color of, you know, your own clothing connected with yellow and white. We will explain that later. The best connected with the days of the week. So Raphael is connected with Mercury. Gabriel connected with the moon and the earth. Number three, the spirit number three before the throne of the cosmic Christ. Uriel, the Archangel Uriel, represented by the planet Venus. We could say, you know, the planet corresponds to a physical vehicle of Uriel. Remember, planets are traveling within the galaxy. It's a journey. They are, we could say they are even dancing listening to the music, to the cosmic divine music that we explain in Universal Sound, another lecture. So Uriel, connected with Venus, the Archangel Uriel, he is ruling the ray of arts, artistic activities, all kinds of artistic forms 
you know, music, dance, filmmaking, public speaking, drama, you know, painting, drawing, etc., etc., all kind of artistic activities. So it, we recommend that you should invoke Uriel to develop sometime your artistic talent. Why not? But it's also connected with the ray of love, arts and love. Couples who are falling in love with each other, who are willing to develop their loving capability, we do recommend to invoke the Archangel Uriel. And the color of Uriel is green. This is the color of planet Venus. The color that we should, you know, also paint part of our bedroom or also wear clothing that color. We would explain it, you know, slowly later. So Archangel Uriel connected with Venus. Here's the spirit number three before the throne. Number four, the Archangel Michael. Michael. Who is Michael? Is a powerful, superior being, more real than you and me. You who is listening to what we are saying right now. Higher than all of us who live on Earth in our limited, you know, development as a human being or aspiring to become a true human with 12 superior senses, 12 senses instead of five. So Ma Michael, the Archangel Michael, is connected with the sun. He's ruling the sun. Can you imagine the sun is more than a million times bigger than the earth? And the color of the sun is golden and also orange. These are the colors that we recommend to be connected with the sun and the Archangel Michael. And Michael rules, you know, the ray of justice. If you have trouble with justice, with tribunals, with courts, let's say you are willing to win a court case and you feel it's only just to do that, we recommend that you invoke the Archangel Michael. You know, if justice is in your sight, Michael will help you. But if you are playing games with Michael and you win a court case, it means that you were not supported by Michael. You were supported by evil entities because they do exist, even we accept it or not. Michael, again, is a powerful archangel, archangel ruling the sun and he's number four within the seven spirits before the throne, before the cosmic Christ. The spiritual sun. Number five. Number five is connected with planet Mars. Mars is ruled, ruled by the Archangel Samael. Samael is connected with the strength. In ancient times, Samael was called the, the God of War. Remember, in the times of the ancient Romans, the ancient Greeks, the God of War was Samael. The color is red. This is why we always speak about the reddish planet. But what people don't understand is that Samael is coming to teach us not only to go into a common war, you know, where people kill, brothers kill other brothers. Samael came to teach us the struggle between angels and demons. How can we ascend within the Jacob's ladder? How can we transform you know, how can we spiritualize matter? How can we transform lead into gold? How can we reach enlightenment? You know, by learning to listen to these superior beings, to these archangels. So again, number five, planet Mars, the fifth angel of the apocalypse is Samael. Okay. Number six, the planet Jupiter. Sahariel is the name of the archangel. Sahariel is connected with Jupiter. Sahariel was called also in the time of the Romans and the ancient Greeks. The Greeks called him Zeus, the god Zeus, the father of all gods. Jupiter is a gigantic planet, smaller than the sun, but much bigger than all other planets of the solar system. Zeus, but the Romans changed the name to Jupiter the god Jupiter, and today we keep the same name for the planet, 
Do you know that Jupiter or Zachariel or Zeus, he ruled in the ray of business and the ray of politics? Did you know that? Politics and business. If you're into politics or you're into business, invoke Zachariel. And if your intentions are good, you know, Zeus or Jupiter or Zachariel will really help you with his legions of angels will contribute to your well-being. But if your intentions are really evil and you are successful, well, you will be held by demons who are the opposite of Zeus and Jupiter. This is very, very important to understand. Are we on the side of the White Lodge? Are we on the side of the Cosmic Christ? Are we on the side of the Divinity? Or are we on the other side, evil side? Okay? The color of business and politics and the planet Jupiter or Zachariel is blue. We do recommend, you know, that if you're doing some business and you're willing to become successful, you can wear some blue clothing or even part of your home can be painted with that color. So this is the spirit, the, the spirit number six from the seven spirits before the throne of the Cosmic Christ. Number seven, who is the seven spirit before the throne? Number seven is Orifiel, connected with the planet Saturn. Saturn, number seven. The color of Saturn is black and also purple, purple and black. What are the connection with Saturn and Orifiel? The Archangel Orifiel is the seven spirit before the throne ruling planet Saturn, but also affecting us psychologically. And this is again connected with astronomy. And before astronomy, astrology, don't forget that. The psychological influence within our conduct on Earth and also the entire solar system. So the ray of Saturn, the ray of the divine Orifiel, the Elohim Orifiel, or the Archangel Orifiel, is connected with death. Death. There are three kinds of death. Physical death, psychological death, which is learning to annihilate our ego, our animal psychology, our own evil, the seven deadly sins of Christianity. You know, Goliath being defeated by King David in the Jewish religion, etc., etc. This is psychological death conscious death of our animal psychology. And the third death is mentioned in the Bible. The Bible calls it the second death. It means in inferno, after we die, Mother Nature will do the work of annihilated, annihilating our demons that we created here on earth. But the second death is extremely painful. If you read the Bible, you study old sacred books, they will mention the inferior dimensions of space where the pain is horrible because the ego doesn't want to die. The ego will fight back. The Satan of all religions refuses to die, but Mother Nature will destroy it in Inferno, the inferior dimensions of space. So, but also Orifiel and Saturn, the colors are black and purple. It's also connected with funerals, you know, of course, somebody died, a relative or a friend. Death, of course, is a moment for meditation. We, know we are all going to die sooner or later. Even resurrected individuals, they also die and they resurrect. They have the power to do it. But also it's a day for prayer and again meditation. Meditation is a day for spirituality. Now, so these are the seven spirits before the throne, okay? The seven spirit before the throne. Why are they so important? Why is it important to remember their names? Because they are more real than we are. With all respect, you know, remember that. They are superior individuals, superior beings who did what we haven't done yet. They, you know, were capable of ascending into higher stage of perfection. And within perfection, there is perfection within perfection. These superior individuals, they learn to spiritualize their matter, 
and they learn to crystallize their spirit, that they unified the purpose of their own lives, they reached enlightenment, and they were given the power and the knowledge to create planets, solar systems, constellations, galaxies, and even groups of galaxies. At the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis, they are described as the Elohim. Remember that word, Elohim. Now, as we said it, these are the ancient gods of ancient religions. We are not going to discuss if they should be continue being called gods. It doesn't really matter. We call them elder brothers. They are superior, superior beings, higher than we are, and they deserve our respect. And they have experienced, they have incarnated already wisdom, consciousness, and love. The three aspects of the divinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have incarnated those elements of perfection. They are closer to the divinity. Now, but this is something also very, very important. In another lecture, we mentioned the history of planet Earth and the history of the human race. We did say that there are seven races in every planet. Do you remember that? Seven, again, the law of seven, the law of organization of the universe, based on the seven musical notes, the seven parallel universes, seven endocrine glands, seven chakras, etc., etc. Seven human races. You see, we are now the fifth human race. So there were four human races before than ours. And we did mention that before, remember. If you didn't, we invite you to listen to that lecture. I don't recall the exact, exact number. I believe it's number six, probably. Look at that, you know, in, in our list of lectures within our website, rickyradio.com. Now... Let's come back into the seven human races. The first human race that existed here, we mentioned that 300 million years ago. You know, they were planted on earth. Why were they planted? Why is it that we didn't wait for the law of evolution and people ascended, you know, from different stages until they reached the actual stage? Well, the original habitants of the earth were immortal beings. They were all resurrected masters. They were all superior beings, angelical beings, and they were also immortal. They are here on earth. They live in the fourth dimension. You know, we call them, they are called in different philosophical schools, the protoblasmatic human race. 300 million years ago, these people were planted on earth people who acquire this perfect stage of consciousness, enlightenment, immortal individuals. They were huge, gigantic individuals, eight meters tall. The protoplasmatic human race, the color of their skin was black-blue. We did mention that before. Well, but they had a boss. They had a leader. That leader was Gabriel. Remember? The first angel of the apocalypse. The, the first spirit, the first of the seven spirits before the throne, Gabriel, incarnated, reincarnated there. He was working with them, guiding them, leading them to create the conditions for this new planet Earth, for the human races to be coming, to be incarnated within our planet Earth, the beginning of humanity, the first human race. So, the Archangel Gabriel accomplished that mission. Of course, there was no trouble then. They were just creating the conditions, the scenario for our actual humanity. The second human race, you know, the second human race, they were white, the foundation of our white human race, white, blonde people, maybe blue eyes. They were also gigantic individuals. Somebody mentioned the land of Apollo, Apollo existed for real here on earth. He was an immortal superior being. The ancient Greeks dedicated a lot of time to invoke Apollo, an immortal individual that is also here on earth. 
helping us without being noticed. Well, that was the second human race, and the second spirit before the throne, coming from our solar system, reincarnated here. Raphael, the second spirit before the throne, connected with medicine, he was here, helping the second human race. The foundation of our white, blonde kind of physicality that we can see it today. The third spirit before the throne, Uriel, the Archangel Uriel, from Venus, he reincarnated here on Earth. The third human race at that time, Lemuria, the Lemurians, that lived in what today is the Pacific Ocean. They were also immortal superior beings. Immortal beings. You need, the Lemurians were, we could say, the foundation of the actual Oriental race. China, Tibet, ancient Mexico, ancient Peru. So the Lemurians, you know, lived in what today is the Pacific Ocean, but that was the time when humanity collapsed. When the Adams and the Eves didn't obey cosmic law. Before the first human race, the second human race, they were male and female at the same time. Remember that? We mentioned that before. So the Bible calls them Adam without Eve. But during the time of Lemuria, the third human race, when Uriel, the Archangel, the Elohim from planet Venus, reincarnated, that was the division of the sexes. That was a very heavy test because the babies became, you know, to be born with different genitalia, male or female. So we needed sexual cooperation now to procreate. Before the first and the second human race, humanity didn't need sexual cooperation because the male and the female genders were within themselves. So they procreated babies individually without sexual cooperation. But in Lemuria, we needed sexual cooperation so to give bodies to angels, angelical beings that were supposed to be mortal, superior, they were not immortal, and these angelical beings that were living within the parallel universes, they were given physical bodies in Lemuria. But that was the time, that was a heavy test. Uriel, connected with the ray of arts, artistic forms, and also loving, love, the ray of love. This is why those couples, they needed to learn to love each other. They were not, you know, a male and a female within one physical body. There were two different bodies now, a masculine body and a feminine body, and they needed sexual cooperation. They needed to learn to love each other, to fall in love with each other, to experience sexual attraction. Even there were angelical beings who had already the knowledge. Well, many of them didn't obey to cosmic law, and they fell. They committed the original sin, that made them descend from the real human's kingdom and the archangelical kingdom into the animal kingdom with human appearance. And here we are. You see, we got the legacy from the past when the Adams and the Eves collapsed. And Uriel had a heavy task, a very heavy task, to train those individuals to ascend when they disobeyed cosmic law. But Uriel appears in the Bible. If you remember the global catastrophe that happened before Atlantis, the Lemurian catastrophe, the Bible calls that, you see, Sodoma and Gomorrah. Do you remember that? A, a gigantic global catastrophe. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, all kind of catastrophes where people perished. Millions of people, billions of people died at that time. And the leader, one of the leaders, is mentioned in the Bible, who was leading the survivors into better lands where they could recreate a new society, a new human race. The survivors created Atlantis in what today is the Atlantic Ocean. So Uriel fulfilled his mission after he had reincarnated and he came back to his planet. Well, in reality, this is a hard kind of explanation because 
in reality who reincarnates is not the ruler of the planet, is an aspect of the ruler, we could say the human soul reincarnates and then the spirit is also leading, ruling that archangel, but this is something to be explained later. So Uriel from Venus was the leader of Lemuria and Atlantis was created. Who was ruling, who reincarnated during the time of Atlantis? The Archangel Michael. Number four, the fourth human race was Atlantis, the Atlantean. Michael reincarnated at that time. His mission was to lead the Atlanteans, but the Atlanteans were not what they used to be in ancient times the time of the first and the second human race, and even the beginning of the third human race, before they collapsed. The Atlanteans were not immortal beings. Michael was an immortal that he lost his immortality. He had to reincarnate on Earth, and he had to ascend again. And his mission, gigantic mission, was to teach the Atlanteans to, to spiritualize their matter, their bodies, and to crystallize their spirit. And at the beginning, Atlantis, you know, because the survivors from Lemuria that created Atlantis were the ones who, who fulfilled that purpose of life. They reached the angelical stage, and some of them reached the archangelical stage, crystallizing the spirit, spiritualizing matter. Now, so we all know that the Atlanteans collapsed again. The first human race is described in the Bible as the flood, and they speak about, you know, a big boat, uh, Noah's Ark, which is only a symbol. In reality, that big boat is, is only a, a symbolism, it's not a reality, because the Atlanteans were technologically more advanced than we are. They had already spaceships to go to the moon. So what they did really, the survivors from Atlantis, was to take, to steal the airplanes from a government, a corrupt government, an evil government, and they escaped in those spaceships to more solid lands. They escaped to what today is Tibet and also the Gulf of Mexico. They used to be the ancient, the ancient Tibetans and also the ancient Mexicans. The pyramids of Mexico were developed by them. You know, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and they moved to the south of Mexico, which is Peru, and they created the Peruvian pyramids. They were also, you know, angelical beings. They reached the angelical stage. The trouble is, when the Atlanteans collapsed, you know, their continent was destroyed by Mother Nature. They didn't respect cosmic law, and they collapsed. So now, the survivor from Atlantis, again, created the fifth human race. Here we are. We are the fifth human race. Who is ruling the fifth human race? Who is the fifth angel of the apocalypse? Samael, the ruler of planet Mars. Samael reincarnated here on Earth. We are not going to talk too much about Samael today. We'll, we'll be doing it in future lectures. But Samael ascended again into a higher stage of perfection. He learned, he relearned again to spiritualize his matter and to crystallize his spirit. And he'll be teaching us. The trouble is we don't listen. You know, this is why our human race is in a big trouble right now, aren't we? The financial, the financial <laughs> aspect of the economy has collapsed everywhere. The economy of the world is in a big trouble. The entire system is collapsing. Actually, all systems that are ruling our economy and our politics are collapsing. Why is that? Because we don't listen to cosmic law. We don't study the Bible. We don't try to understand it. We don't understand alchemy and Kabbalah. We don't want to spiritualize our matter and our bodies. We don't understand what's crystallizing the spirit. How can we crystallize the spirit if we don't spiritualize matter first? First is first. If we don't, if we don't spiritualize matter by learning to annihilate the ego, there is no way 
we are going to make our spirit descend. That's impossible. The spirit cannot descend because if our spirit could enter within our bodies, corrupt bodies, we would die incinerated. Did you know that? The highest, highest voltage of our spiritual being good electrocute us. So we have to learn to spiritualize matter. We have to learn to annihilate the ego. It's explained in every sacred book of all religions. Why do we want to understand? Because we're stubborn. We are ignorant. We believe we know it all and we don't. Isn't it time to wake up? Are we, aren't we sleeping 24 hours a day? Yes, we are. We're sleeping 24 hours a day and we refuse to wake up. This is why earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions contribute to shaken our consciousness. We begin to realize that we, are, we have no real power at all. Mother Nature owns everything. What's the purpose of becoming a billionaire after we have became million, multi-millionaires? What's the purpose? We cannot take that money to the other side. What's the purpose of being selfish, arrogant? What's the purpose of being greedy? What's the purpose of experience lust? To be unfaithful in a, in a relationship? To imitate animals in our sexual act? What's the purpose of that? You see, we should pay attention to our lives. Have we learned to live? Of course not. You know, this is the point. We are the fifth human race, and we are going to repeat the same sad experience from the past. The sad experience of the Lemurians that were destroyed by Mother Nature. The survivors were only those who learned a little bit to spiritualize their matter, who learned to crystallize their spirit. Those who learned to practice alchemy and to practice Kabbalah within themselves. And those who listened to the seven spirits before the throne. In this case, we are not listening to Samael. We are not listening. But the time has come to learn to listen, because he's here already. He is around. He's teaching us to understand science and religion and philosophy and the artistic, artistic, you know, activities better than before. To come back to the beginning, to the way we used to be, to the way our ancestors used to be, superior beings, because we don't descend from animals. We don't descend from the cave people. Mr. Darwin was wrong. His followers were wrong. They were incomplete. They were well-intentioned. We don't deny that. But good intentions are not good enough. The way to inferno is paved with good intentions. Now, who is the sixth spirit before the throne? He will come within the next human race. We haven't got there yet. We're still in the fifth human race. But with all respect, we don't want to scare anybody. We are assisting to the end of our actual human race. This is the beginning of the end. Just pay attention to the messages being sent by Mother Nature. Mother Nature is recycling planet Earth. It isn't it teaching us to recycle ourselves, to purify ourselves, to stop, stop being egotistic, to stop being intellectual animals, to learn to become true humans, to learn to annihilate wars, because the day we do that, that day will be closer to become humans. So, and the seventh spirit before the throne, Orifiel, will come at the end of planet Earth, where only an angelical humanity will be living, like the moon. In the moon there are only angels, you see, who can live there because they are superior beings. So these are, you know, the seven spirits before the throne. These are their importance. So astrology was annihilated, eliminated from the Bible, from our common knowledge. We are bringing it back. But we also disagree with our modern astrologers, because many of them, an immense majority of them, are just business people who don't really care about helping others. They only care about making money from astrology. <laughs> what is that? 
You know, there are many people who are into witchcraft and many people who read your palms and many people who pretend to know. They even produce a personal chart connected with the influence of the planet according to your birth date. Did you know, listen to this carefully, did you know that the Inquisition, when they annihilated, they wanted to annihilate the knowledge of alchemy, Kabbalah, and astrology, they also changed the days of the week. Did you know that? Are you aware of that? Well, now we are going to try to explain what really happened. What really happened. You see, if you are into astrology and you are making a chart, a personal, a private chart to an individual, if you don't know the real days of the week, your chart will be incomplete and, of course, wrong. Pay attention to this lecture, please. This final part of this lecture. Again, the seventh spirit before the throne, Gabriel, connected with the moon. Gabriel, connected with the moon, is Monday. That should be the first day of the week. Monday, moon. In Latin, is Luna. Luna means moon, Gabriel. But do you know that what we call Monday today is not Monday, it is Sunday. So our Sunday that already passed, unless we are in on Sunday today. Sunday really is Monday. That's the real name of Sunday. Because the moon is acting strongly on earth that day of the week. Gabriel is acting. So Sunday is not Sunday. Please pay attention to my words. Write it down if you want it. Sunday is not Sunday. Sunday it is Monday, the first day of the week, according to the movement of the planet around the solar system and according to the influence on Earth. Please remember my words. So the first day of the week is Monday and the actual Sunday is not Sunday, it is Monday. The second day of the week, ruled by Raphael, the planet Mercury. The second day of the week is Wednesday. Listen to this. It is Wednesday, but we call it Monday. You see, the actual Monday today is wrong. It is Wednesday, ruled by Raphael. And as we said before, if Raphael is connected with medicine, so our actual Monday, which is not Monday, it is Wednesday, this is the best day to invoke Raphael to heal someone, to heal yourself or to heal someone. If you pray to Raphael, you can get a lot of help. The angels of medicine can be of help. And the same thing with our actual Sunday, which is wrong, because Sunday it is Monday. This is the best day for procreation. The actual Sunday, to procreate the baby, you invoke the Archangel Gabriel. The third angel of the apocalypse, again, Uriel, Venus, you see, so our actual Tuesday is the acting of Venus. The planet Venus is actually Friday, Venus, Friday, Viernes, Viernes in Latin, but corresponds to our actual Tuesday. So Tuesday is not Tuesday, it's actually Friday, it's actually Friday. So the third angel of the apocalypse what we call Tuesday is not Tuesday, it is Friday. Venus, Uriel. The fourth angel of the apocalypse, Michael, the sun. The sun corresponds to Sunday. Sunday. But Sunday is not Sunday. It is actually our Wednesday. Our Wednesday, it is Sunday. The real Sunday. Michael is ruling that. The planet Sun. Because Sun, the sun, is a gigantic living organism where their humanity is an angelical humanity, people ma made of pure fire and light. Superior beings live in the sun. It's not just a fireball, it's more than that. It's a gigantic living organism. We could say it's the capital of our solar system. It corresponds to our own heart. Our heart is the capital of our organism. Sunday, Michael, is our actual Wednesday. The fifth angel of the apocalypse, Mars, Samael. 
Thursday, our Thursday is Aguel Akshar Tuesday. So Thursday is this Tuesday, ruled by Samael Mars. And now, the sixth angel of the apocalypse, Jupiter, Zachariel. This is, Jupiter is connected with Jueves. Jueves, so Friday is really Thursday. You see, ruled by Jupiter, connected with business, color blue. And finally, Orifiel is connected with Saturday. That was the only day of the week that was not changed. The only day of the week that was not changed. So I hope I didn't confuse you very much. This is very confusing because in reality, you know, the days of the week have been changed to produce the same effect, to confuse humanity. This old calendar was more perfect than the actual one. You see, the influence of the seven spirits before the throne within our human behavior, how can we become more in touch with the divinity? Because each one of them has a tremendous cosmic mission. They are all connected with the seven rays descending from the absolute. You see, the ray of creation, procreation, the ray of medicine, the ray of love and arts, the ray of justice, cosmic justice, the ray of strength, the struggle between good and evil, war between angels and demons, the ray of politics and economics, and finally the ray of death. And death is physical death, psychological death, and also the second death in Inferno, where Mother Nature will get rid of our demons after we go to Inferno. We cannot go to heaven with so many demons that we carry within. The seven deadly sins, they are demons. Our evil conduct, we don't even realize it because our ego has eaten our consciousness. So I know this has been a very hard lecture, hard to explain it. And well, our mission is to do that no matter what. So the seven spirits before the throne, these are their mission. This is their purpose. It is very, very important to understand the book of Apocalypse, the book of Revelations, because if we don't change, Mother Nature is recycling and is teaching us to recycle ourselves. This is the purpose of Apocalypse. We have to practice the Apocalypse within ourselves to learn from the seven spirits before the throne who did the work that has to be done but each one of us to learn to spiritualize matter by annihilating the ego, the animal psychology, the materialistic psychology, and also to learn to crystallize the spirit. But first is number one. First, spiritualizing matter means learning to listen to cosmic law, to divine law. So the apocalypse is that. The apocalypse has to be done within each one of us. Otherwise, if we don't do it, we are going to be destroyed and we won't be able to ascend. At the contrary, we are going to stay there, here where we are. Maybe we will come back into levels of evolution, into involution, which is something that will prove that we have become a failure as a human race. And we are already, we are already, you know, designed to ascend. Why don't we do that instead of descending? Uh, Jim, I'd like to ask a question or two. First of all, um, the seven spirits before the throne, what, what does the word apocalypse mean? Everyone says, uh, has a notion that apocalypse is something bad, right? Really bad that happens to you. Yeah, es essentially, you know, many people believe it's destruction. Yeah. You know, complete destruction, annihilation. <clears throat> but it is, part of it is true. But people don't understand that it means really recycling. Recycling means transforming lead into gold. Yeah. But lead refuses to die. <laughs> lead refuses to transform into gold. Gnostically, the, 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 the metal lead is uh, referring to the ego, right? That's correct. And gold is uh, the spirit. Is right? the spirit, yes. So this is the point, you know. The ego is also connected with our actual personality. You know, our way of thinking, our way of looking at life. But uh, this lecture is all about the seven, I don't think you said it, but I think it's uh, about the seven waves, right? Or the seven 
uh, tendencies. People, when people are born, they're always of one of these waves, right? Yeah, that's correct. So, in other, so in other words, your life will actually be um, sort of channeled into one of these seven waves, waves right? Yeah, it, it is channeled, you know, I mean, we all have a talent, a vocation. For example, if you're a police officer, you're a detective, you know, uh, and you're, you're a lawyer, you're a judge, your mission is to do justice, of course, to contribute to justice. And of course, probably you will be studying one of these professions, you know. Yeah. And, but on the other side, the other, this is one of the cosmic rays connected with the Archangel uh, Michael, you know. And it's also connected with the laws of justice, cosmic justice. We mentioned that before, the law of karma, dharma. Like, if you're born a, and, and, and you want to you have the strong attraction to become a doctor, say, that would be uh, medicine is um, number one, right? Is yeah, that's number correct. One? That's correct. No, medicine oh, is medicine number, number two. Number two. Number yeah. two, the ray of medicine connected so, with Raphael. Does that, yeah. does that mean when you were born, you have to be born on, on uh, the, our calendar is Monday, but uh, the old calendar would have been Wednesday. So would you be born on a Wednesday? No, it doesn't work that way, does no, it? No, not really. You know, uh, it's, it's connected with our spiritual being, our spirit is connected with that specific ray. Yeah. It's like we were created that way, you see. And of course, it's, it's, uh, it's something very high to be comprehended. But in reality, it doesn't mean that we have to ignore the other's race. There are seven rays connected with the seven spirit before the throne. Well, it helps, you, it helps you to understand other people as well, because when you're dealing with other people and you know that they're of a certain ray, yes, then you can understand them a lot better yeah, too. Right? The seven rays, you know, are connected. For example, you know, the ray of justice, cosmic justice, according to the son, Michael. Well, doing justice means in every aspect of life. For example, Procreation, okay, a man and a woman, a, a husband who's hitting his wife like an animal, you know, his brutality within the sexual, within the relationship, or a man who is raping a woman is not doing justice to cosmic justice. So, and that's connected with procreating life, you know, many babies are being born out of, of a rape. Yeah, yeah. You see, so there is no justice there. And of course, maybe that baby will be ignored. You know, because it was a baby, maybe the baby will be killed. And and this is the point. So we have to bring justice there. We have to bring justice into medicine. The business of medicine, for example, today, you know, the laboratories, some, sometimes they do care more about profits than about healing. Am I right or wrong, you know? And this is a very serious matter. We have to bring justice into that. So doctors who contribute to create that kind of medicine, the biologist, they have to be serious enough not to produce a product only to make money, but also to really heal. You see, what about justice in, into, into what, what else? Into the arts. You know, when an artist is taking drugs to get inspiration and is killing himself or become an alcoholic, searching for inspiration, you know, to develop his imagination, and his liver will be cooked because of alcohol, is not doing justice to himself. You see? So this is the point. What about war? You know, wars, Samael, Mars. People believe, oh, we have to jump into the battlefield, you know, to destroy our enemies. People don't realize that the enemy is within. The ego has to be annihilated. So the war is a psychological war. That's doing justice, really to the ray of war, the ray of strength, you know, of Samael Mars. You see, what about death? Why, why do we have to wait until we die to allow Mother Nature to destroy our ego in Inferno when we can do it here on Earth? This is the but, purpose of life, you know, to spiritualize matter. Yeah, but if you want to step aside from the Gnostic uh, view for a moment, though, if you're, if you're of the ray number seven, okay, which is death, you're, aren't you likely to become an undertaker and be involved with uh, the business of, uh, pe you know, looking after dead people and things like that? Uh, if you're of the ray of number one, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you can't, maybe you'll be starting a business, maybe you'll be starting a club, an organization, maybe you'll have a lot of energy to do that. 
but the rays don't necessarily have to, um, they're related to, aren't they related to numerology as well? The first seven numbers of numerology are very closely related to the rays as well, yeah, right? Yeah, they are, they are, of course, yeah. they are connected. But you know, that's more complex, so yeah. it, would be, it wouldn't be easy to explain that, you know, yeah. in, in a, within the same lecture. So, you know, you're right, you know, everybody has a, we have a vocation in life. We have talents that sometimes we do, we even ignore that we have them. So we should develop that talent because it's connected with our own individual ray. My ray, for example, is justice, you know, and instead of studying law or to become becoming a police officer or whatever, or a judge, you know, I, I studied accounting because in accounting, Originally, I studied accounting and you have to make a balance at the end of operations of a company. And the balance is also justice, doing justice to the business, you know. I mean, you have to know exactly if you have lost or you have earned, you know, some profit or if you also organize the business properly to control the business better and also to get information from the business. Are we doing right or wrong? So it is connected with the ray of justice. But I also study filmmaking and drama because I wanted to communicate with the world. I wanted to be able to become a stronger communicator and through filmmaking and also drama, this is a good way to connect with everyone else. And you certainly are a good communicator. <laughs> well, um, we are trying to be. <laughs> anyway, um, the calendar has been changed and it's... Um, on the surface, it seems a little complicated because the old calendar and the new calendar share Saturday as the only day that, that hasn't been changed. So in our, our calendar, we go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we're back to Saturday. But in the age, ancient calendar, you're saying that, um, oh, let's see, Saturday was correct, so the next day would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then back to Saturday. So this yep. uh, basically, if astrologers would get the days of the week correctly, um, their astrology perhaps would be a bit more accurate, wouldn't it? That's correct. That's correct. You know, it's very important to tell the truth when you're doing, you know, a private research about, you know, connected with your birth date and also the influence of the planets within your own conduct, within your own destiny. Because we all have a destiny, but that destiny can be changed. I cannot change the past, but I can always change the future. Let's say I'm supposed to die tomorrow because in my past life I committed so many mistakes that now it is my destiny to die. I don't deserve to live longer. But let's say today I do something, inc something incredible. You know, I can avoid a catastrophe where an entire, you know, group of people will die. And because of my sacrifice, we can save lives, you know. We can do incredible things in an incredible act that we have performed. Then we can even renegotiate our karma. We can, maybe I won't die tomorrow because I will deserve to live longer. You see, so I can change my future. Even if my future is not very clear, it's not very, you know, good for me. But this is also connected with our, you know, our astrological charts. Allow me to tell you something else. This is something very important that the founder of our schools of Gnostic Anthropology has developed through his books and lectures. He has said that if we learn to invoke the seven spirit before the throne, he will learn to speak to Gabriel, to Raphael, to Uriel, to Michael, to Samael, to Zachariel, and to Orifiel. And we learn to go within astral body. We're going to explain that in future lectures. What's astral projection? We can visit them in their temples, within the center of each planet. We can have a dialogue with them, a respectful dialogue with the superior being, and we can get their help directly. We don't need to write down a piece of paper, you know, where we're going to describe the influence of the planets and the influence of the seven spirit before the throne. If we have learned to communicate with them directly. 
This is the new astrology of the Aquarian age. With all respect, this is a message to astrologers, people who are willing to walk this path in a very, seri in a very serious manner. With all respect. Well, Jim, that was uh, a very interesting lecture. As I've said before, I always learn something from your lectures. So thank you very much. My pleasure, Rick. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thanks to our listeners for paying attention to what we were trying to say. Thank you again to everyone. Thanks to the divinity. Thank to the universe. Thanks to Cosmic Law for allowing us to be here. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You've been listening to Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Gnostic Lectures is a continuing series of lectures on Gnostic Anthropology. Today's lecture was lecture number 20, The Seven Spirits Before the Throne, Apocalypse. The website is rickyradio.com. The Gmail address is gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you very much.